Okay, the how-to series, the next one. Um, the other day I uploaded this model, so a rigged fixture where you grab your target of the light and the whole system follows as it should. So people ask me how did I do this, so I'm going to show you. Here we go. So what we need is we need a model, of course, and then uh, this model. Let me just put it down here. Uh, this model has to have its pivot points at the proper location. That if you rotate stuff and do stuff, it is rotating at the proper points. Then it needs linking. That's the first part. So if you grab your light, you need to link your light to the geometry of the light, and you have to do the same with the target. Link it to the light. Next step is link the light geometry to the bracket down here and then from the bracket to the ceiling part. So if I move the ceiling part, the whole system follows. That's step one. After that, <coughs> we need to apply an IK chain. So we're going to apply it down here in the animation menu, IK solvers, and we're using the history dependent solver. That means that if I move my target, the rest will follow and not the other way around. So make sure you hit the bracket. Here you go. And as you can see, it's already starting to do kind of what we want it to do. But of course, we need some restrictions in axis and so on to make sure that this one doesn't flip but only rotates. So we start here at the top. We go to our hierarchy, IK, and say, okay, this one is the final one. It shouldn't do anything. And if you look here, there's rotational joints and they should be off. That's one. Then you move to the next part. <coughs> this is has two. It has sliding joints and it has rotational joints. The sliding joints we don't need because it doesn't slide, it just rotates. And if you're not sure which axis you need, you just grab one of the numbers and you can see what happens to it in real time. And you can see, okay, this is not the one we need or not the axis we need. So we don't need the XX. We don't need the Y. In this case, we just need the Z because if I just turn it around, you can see that's the direction we need. So that was for this part, and then we move on to the light geometry itself. Again, same questions. Sliding? Nope. Rotation? Yes. Which direction? Try. This direction. <coughs> okay. So turn off Y and Z, and we'll put a limit on this one, which means it's limited in uh, flipping this way and limited in flipping that way. So if I just grab it and say, okay, it should be something like this. So let's say 115. And the other way around, same, <coughs> also 115. So now it's not able to rotate more than those numbers. Then we move on to the last part of your chain. And this one is also not rotating, so not rotating but this one is only sliding and it shouldn't be able to slide in any other direction than this directly towards the light source itself. So if you put this one in parent, you can see the z-axis is pointing towards that, so it must be this one. So now if you do something like this, just to check what is happening, you can put a limit on it as well. So let's say this is as close as it should go and then the other way increase this one to about 500. The reason why I'm doing this is that now the range is outside of the here. As soon as you go outside the range you see that this part is moving outside of the range and as this one moves further out of your range you might get problems in your movements like a little bit of jerky movement so that's not what we want and that's why I put this one at 500. So now let me get it back and let's see what we got because we're actually finished now so if I move this you can see it is doing what it's supposed to do if I change this one to view if I move it up you can see it's doing what it's supposed to do if I move it like this it's doing what it's supposed to do so as you can see the whole system is now already working and in place so it's not that complicated to do so now maybe to clean up things a little bit, you can see all these helpers, these uh, little brownish lines and circles and bits and pieces. <coughs> you can turn that off just to keep it nice and clean. Uh, you have to go to your display panel. Um, it's not a hide by category thing, it's a link display. If you 
select this one, display links, it will remove the links or all these helper lines. So if I select all the objects and do it in one go, you can see now we have a nice clean scene set up and so on. So this is working properly as it's supposed to be and this is how you set these kind of things up in a very simple and well straightforward fashion. Maybe not the best solution but it works and it works pretty well for me. So I hope you have learned something and see you next time. Cheers.